Hi everyone, hope everyone is having a great day here with Sinus J and Slater. Today I wanted to discuss top-ups. I know that obviously the best experience, or sorry, the best top-up would be to remove the old insulation, especially if it's no good anymore, and to uh, put a spray foam of two inches to put a vapor barrier down, have no air leakage whatsoever, and then even uh, just continue with the spray foam because I know that there's a lot of people that say just straight up do spray foam even the half pound over top of the two pound so you've got your vapor barrier and then you've got your bigger R value. I have seen many benefits of fiberglass insulation. I know it's not the greatest because obviously you have to have an air seal, an absolute perfect air seal, but I do install an R60 in every single one of my homes that I do a top up for. Um, so that's almost two feet of insulation. And during the winter, I will look outside and I see a massive difference. There's no more icicles, there's a lot more snow, and that's the other thing I actually wanted to cover. With the ventilation, I add an R40 to, uh, or an R32 to what's existing. The difference is obviously adding one foot or uh, close to 15 inches of loose fill insulation. That therefore means that the current vents, all depending on what they are, probably are not high enough. So I have to add more vents around the soffit area in order to have the blowing not go and cover the uh, air intake for the attic. I also always look at the roof vents to make sure that they're not covered because a lot of times I unfortunately have seen those holes covered with either the uh, underlying ice shield. So then you're stuck with basically having any little tiny amount of hot air that seeps through the insulation from your home through the insulation, but then it has nowhere to exit. So those definitely have to stay open so that your attic can properly breathe. If you have those uh, turtle looking vents at the roof, now that you've added insulation, you will have now more snow on your roof that will stay and it won't melt. So what does that mean? Well, it means that also those vents, if they're not high enough and you're in a zone that gets a lot of snow, those vents are gonna be covered. And so they won't be able to breathe properly. I have seen homes that have an R60 and there's basically water on the underside of the plywood because the house just can't breathe. And there's some areas as well, obviously, that have heat loss. So, and, and most of the time, the heat loss is at the attic hatch that I've seen or the bathroom fans. Some top-ups that I do are very difficult. In this example, for for instance, it was maybe an 18 inch clearance. And so it was very difficult to get around. I have a video that I can recommend to you about uh, how to safely go through the attic. Once again, though, if you are not comfortable doing this by yourself, it's uh, definitely recommended that you hire a professional to do this. I personally wear knee pads. I find some attics, unfortunately, are so small that you can't even get a piece of plywood or board into the attic so that you can step on it. Um, but that is definitely, if you are able to do that, that is recommended uh, at least a sort of a three foot long piece of board. If you have any longer than that, then it's very difficult to handle when you're going around the attic. You know, biggest thing that you wanna do is you always wanna find those tresses so look at the roof line and see where, how the trusses are aligned. And then you, what I basically do is I use my hands first. I uncover the truss. It's either 16 inch on center or it's two feet on center. Most attics that I actually encounter have maybe six, maybe eight inches of insulation. So like I said, huge difference, especially if it's fiberglass, because six inches of fiberglass basically does nothing. Um, it, it, it resists a little bit, but it's just so thin that uh, the air can easily uh, get through. Whereas with two feet of insulation, now it's sort of like having 10 filters in your face and trying to breathe versus having just the one filter in your face and breathing. Right, so that's how I visualize it. With that, hope you enjoyed the video and you learned something by watching this. Um, stay tuned for next week. I'm not 100% sure, but I could be doing either a kitchen vent um, exhaust or even the dryer exhaust. So stay tuned for that next week on Tuesday.